So yes. hi everyone. Um, yeah, basically, uh, before I get into it, I just want to have a cute, quick introduction about Angie Miller. So Angie Miller is a um, uh, Malaysian made, Malaysian based email marketing uh, software as a service. Uh, so today, what I'm going to do is that we're going to uh, talk about um, how you're going to build um, your audience, uh, engage with them and also retain them um, using some of the tools in um, Engine Miller. Um, I think right now with uh, the current situation, um, it is, uh, it's actually vital for us to uh, get to know other channels and ways to actually um, consistently connect with your customers. And yeah, basically, so that's, that's that. So the first thing that I'm just going to get into first is, um, you know, why email marketing? So maybe some of you have uh, already started and got into it already. And some may have questions on, oh, should I go or should I not? Um, so these are the five things, uh, main things that um, we we feel that email marketing is important. Uh, the first thing, of course, is it's a great tool to actually um, lead to conversion. Um, email marketing is not really for the mass. Um, mass is, of course, you use um, social media, Facebook, Instagram. It makes sense for you to reach out to the mass. Um, that's where you get your brand out there um, and then you get people to be interested in your product. Um, and then email actually comes as a second layer to that. Uh, so if you notice that there is actually a pattern, if you show interest in a product through Facebook or Instagram, uh, people usually either ask them to WhatsApp or, you know, uh, provide us with your email address and then we will get in touch with you after that. And that's when the, the communication starts. Um, secondly would be, of course, it's cost effective as compared to other channels. Um, it is much more cheaper. Also, depending on which software as a service you pick, um, I think at the end of the day, that is also one of the most important things, especially right now. Um, thirdly, is quantifiable. So, so what do we mean by quantifiable is um, we, there, there is reports for you to see. So if you were to do something, you were to execute something, um, we generate reports and you'll be able to see whether it works or whether it does not and how we can actually improve from there. And fourth would be data is yours. Um, what do we mean by this is because all the email contacts that you have um, accumulated or acquired, um, it's yours. No one is going to take it from you. Um, if I were to give an example, like, um, well, touch wood, if uh, Facebook were to decide to shut down, you know, or Instagram decides to shut down and you have hundreds and thousands of followers there, like how exactly are you going to keep that data? And the only way you can do that is if these people actually give you a certain amount of data that you can um, uh, preserve basically so um, emails are basically no one can take it from you and it's there for you to use and yeah so and last but not least of course it's highly customizable and the reason why we say this is because when you accumulate contacts you are able to segmentize them based on um, maybe their interests or their age or um, uh, their gen gender and you can then just curate contents uh, based on whatever that you um, categorize them under. So these are basically the uh, first, the few introductions towards uh, why you should use email marketing. And yeah, so we should start with uh, just a feature overview of what we have in Engineer. So right now we have about um, seven, seven tools out there that you can that you can actually use and access right now. Um, firstly, is actually our subscribers feature. So um, I will show it to you later. Um, basically. I'm not going to do a live demo. I already pre-recorded it. So later I can just share it with you guys and you can see. Um, the first would be subscribers. So our subscribers works in a way that it is actually a database management uh, platform. So you can import as many um, contact lists as you want and you can categorize it as many as you want and you can tag them to multiple categories. Up to you. It's a... Uh, it's as much as whatever data do you have, you can tag them as many as you want. 
Um, campaigns, on the other hand, is uh, it's pretty basic. It's a uh, drag and drop. Um, anyone um, can actually use it. Even a uh, uh, one person running enter- uh, what's that, SME or enterprise can use it. To a large enterprises, uh, corporation also can use. Um, and uh, the one thing special about our campaigns is that uh, whoever that does not have uh, an image bank, uh, we actually have an inbuilt free stock photos in for you. So all you have to do is just key in the keywords and um, all the pictures will come out and you can just immediately use it uh, there and then. Uh, thirdly would be transactional. So transaction is, transactional is more notification emails. So for example, like welcome emails, thank you emails. Uh, we have uh, this platform that you're able to use, um, but you need to have uh, someone who has knowledge of APIs. Um, and fourth would be service. So it has nothing to do with emails, but uh, we decided to just add it in because we noticed that people do use uh, emails to send out their surveys. So we thought, why don't we just put in a survey tool in, in it so that it can build the service within NGMiller and then use that and use uh, NGMiller to send it out through emails. Um, and then fifth would be the forms. We have form builders, uh, which you can use. Um, autoresponders, uh, which you can cre- create multiple series of um, uh, sequences. So, and lastly would be, of course, reports, which we will generate for campaigns, transactional surveys, and also our autoresponders. Okay, so I just basically browsed through like a choo-choo train. I hope everyone caught up with that. (laughs) So the first thing we're going to start with is how to actually build your audience. So I think one of the challenges that people have right now or questions that we always get is how do we build our contact list? Um, What do we use other than Facebook and uh, Instagram and so on? Uh, So a lot of people use forms as well and also their website. So if you notice that some of your websites actually have um, uh, and, and, and subscribe to subscribe to your newsletter, that is actually one of the ways that you can actually build um, your list. Another way is, of course, through forms. So as mentioned, we actually have uh, an inbuilt form in NGMailer. So what you see right now is uh, our subscribers tool. And under our subscribers tool, we actually have four ways to actually import your subscribers. So um, one of the famous ones is, of course, importing via um, CSV files, uh, which is pretty, is common, right? And then there are people that goes more, uh, take a a step further and then they do integrations. So integrations works well with uh, maybe if you have a website and uh, someone, you have a subscription to newsletter section, you can order, you can actually integrate that to engine Miller and whatever information that people key in there will automatically be imported into your subscribers list. So you do not have to do a whole manual of import and export it in uh, export and import into engine Miller. And same goes to form builders because we have an inbuilt form uh, uh, tool in engine Miller. So when you build your form, whoever that fills up your form will immediately be imported into um, our subscribers list. Um, so I'm just going to play uh, a quick preview of how our forms work. So it's as easy as, um, hopefully I'm just trying to play this. <laughs> Oops. Sorry guys, give me a minute. This is my first time. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. It's a same thing is a drag and drop like the campaigns uh, tool and um, we have uh, created a form and confirmation page for you. Uh, whatever that's created here you can create on your own through custom fields so you can add address, you can add age, you can add um, anything, you can add locations, it's, it's open, you can do whatever you want. You can even uh, add more images, you can um, edit the headings, um, you can change colors. So the flexibility is there. So anyone and 
basically everyone can actually do create a form uh, on the go. So as you can see, you can actually preview it. Um, everything here is mobile responsive. So once you've already done your design, we have a, we have a few ways which you can publish your forms. Uh, but before that, we actually have two things. Uh, we allow you to send verification email to ensure that whoever the keys in the email is valid. And secondly would be your confirmation email. So whoever that actually verifies their email um, would actually receive this uh, confirmation email saying thank you for verifying, verifying. So these are the few ways that you can actually publish your form. One is of course through our NGMailer portal. So all you have to do is just copy the link, paste it into a browser and it's ready to go. And another way would be to embed the form into your website, take the script, put it into your website, and lastly would be to have full control of your source file. So um, yeah, and the reason why we feel that the verification emails are important is because uh, this is actually one of the ways to help to ensure that your list is clean and genuine. Now a lot of people have these problems when you have a sing something called a single opt-in. So whoever just keys in whatever email, uh, you automatically be imported into your list. And then if you send it out, it turns out that this it's a it's a fake email or it's not valid. So this can actually um, affect your your the domain reputation, which is another topic altogether to be honest but this is something that's very important that's something that you should consider which is to put um, a verification email uh, when someone gives you the your email address. Um, so another thing if you notice uh, we actually have um, something called a scan a QR code uh, we recently put it in because we noticed that uh, when you go for for example you have high volumes of people uh, wanting to fill in the forms. Um, um, obviously, now we can't really have events, physical events anymore, but in the future, um, it will make sense because you can actually, even even now, you can actually um, put it, put this QR code anywhere, and whoever that scans this QR code, they will immediately get this form. So basically, they can just fill it up um, as and when they want to. So this is basically how our form actually works. It's really, really easy. Um, I, I guess it's, uh, it's basically meant for anyone to actually use it. Uh, and of course, whatever that's being filled in here will automatically be um, imported into our subscribers list. So this is basically an alternative to Google Forms, I might say. Um, so the next would be how to manage your contact list, right? Because you have so much contacts, you, you basically don't know um, how to actually categorize them. Um, there are some software as a service out there, uh, ESPs out there that actually goes just by list. So you upload and then you just blast, and you upload then you just blast. For us, we believe that it is important for you to have a proper place where a tool that you can actually manage your contacts first because when you're able to manage your contacts properly you then be able to know what kind of contents to curate for your campaigns and then in the end you will result with really good engagements from your from your contact list so this is a preview of our subscribers um, so our subscribers as you can see we have a few things here that we can show um, so for the overview is basically that you will see the whole, everyone that's actually opted in to receive your emails. Um, we also have the inactive list, which we will keep all those that have unsubscribes or invalid emails. And the beauty of our subscribers tool is that um, whoever that unsubscribes or whoever has email is invalid anymore, we, we will actually auto suppress for you. So if the next time you target to the same list, we will not send to these people anymore. So this, in this way, we actually help to not only save in terms of your email credit usage, but we also help in terms of cleaning, consistently cleaning your subscribers list. So um, yeah, so that's basically for, for the overview. Now we also have um, a few options where you can view your history and delete all your subscribers. Um, and next will be custom fields. So this, 
the one that I actually mentioned from the forms. You can create as many custom fields here. So as you can see, I can even just put gender and you can import and tag them based on all these things. So whatever data that you have, which makes sense to help increase the engagements in your email, you can import it because the custom fields are open. You can create as many as you want. It's sort of like a light CRM. Um, and here are categories which people commonly use. So you can create as many categories and as many subcategories. And because it's a database management platform, your emails are all unique. So if you tag me to 100 categories and you decide to tag one uh, target one campaign to these 100 categories, I will only receive it once. We will not be sending 100 times to this person. And um, so I think that's also a good thing. Um, next would be segmentation. So next, segmentation is another level. Um, segmentation, you're, it, it only works and will make sense if you consistently send um, newsletters out and you have a lot of contacts. So this is where you can actually really, really target them based on the behavior and engagements, um, their, their reactions towards your newsletters that you send previously. So, and then of course, lastly, it's just exporting. So if you want to export your contacts, we have that function as well. So that's basically an overview of um, our subscribers tool. And um, if you're on to the next, so the next thing would be, okay, I have built my audience. I have managed them and categorized them. So what are the tools in Angie Miller that I can use to engage with them and to retain them? I think what um, some, some organizations, uh, we, how to say, not really, we fail to, we tend to overlook um, our current customers. We are so engrossed in how we're going to acquire more customers, new customers, new customers. And we lack the sense of how are we going to retain the current ones when in fact that the current ones will probably have the higher possibility to uh, spend more money with you because they've already trusted you. Um, they trust your service, they trust your products, and that's why they're still there. Um, as compared to acquiring new customers, you need time to actually acquire their trust, spend more money. Um, of course, uh, a lot of you uh, who, who are in marketing industry, you obviously um, will know that retaining a customer is much more cheaper as compared to acquiring new ones. So the first uh, tool that uh, we, I'm going to touch for in terms of this is um, our campaigns tool. So this is how simple it is. It's, it's basically a drag and drop again. You can drag uh, as many uh, sections. So if you want, for example, uh, two sections and you want to add additional two M images, you're able to do that. So you just have to drag and drop. And then now I just want to add uh, buttons in between both. So you just have to drag it. And now I want to insert uh, images. So this is where I'm just going to sh show uh, where we can search for this, the search for the free photos. So um, first thing, if you can see, there's actually a search free photos here. And you just have to click on it. And what you got to do is just have to put a keyword. So if you can see, it's powered by Unsplash, Pixels, and also Pixabay. Uh, so in this, uh, in this case, I've uh, um, inserted meetings as a keyword. And so all the images that's tagged to this key set specific keyword will appear in your search. So you can import whatever images that's here into um, your image bank within Engine Miller. So once it's uploaded here, then you can select. And once you select it, it will then be automatically inserted into um, your template. So in this case, I'm basically gonna choose the one that I chose just now, and it will just appear there immediately. And I'm gonna do the same for the next. Um, so I'm just gonna pick whatever that's already pre-uploaded in my um, um, image preview here. And then I'm going, and for the button, 
you just have to add it to however you want. Click here, go here. Um, if you want to change uh, the colors, you can. Uh, so here in this case, I decided to just pick anything random, uh, a gray. But basically, you can choose whatever color that you want. So the flexibility is really is easy to use, basically. Um, so yeah, so this is basically a rundown on um, our campaign template, a drag and drop. Um, you can also uh, choose whatever ready-made templates that we have, or you can start from a scratch. That's also not a problem. Um, yeah, so once you're, you're, you're done with this, you have an option to preview. So we have two options. So you can see how it looks like on desktop, and you can also see how it looks like on mobile. Now, a lot of people always ask us like, okay, can I just like copy and paste my HTML in there? Yes, you can, but um, we will advise for you to test uh, sending it out to different types of email clients. And we also advise for you to check in different browsers because um, HTMLs can be a bit sensitive. And we always try and encourage people to create their template within the campaign editor because the frame is already fixed there to help you, uh, to help to immediately convert it to be mobile responsive for you. So yeah, so that's basically um, um, the summary of uh, our campaign tool. And now we're just going to go next to our autoresponders. So autoresponders is very good when you actually know how um, your customers works and what to send to them. So this is an example, a, screen, uh, a video example of our respond, uh, autoresponders that we are using for Engine Mailer. So previously, um, I'm just going to share a little bit about how we learned in terms of our on onboarding process. Um, I have to admit, in the initial stage, uh, it was very manual. Um, we had to call one by one everyone that actually registered, and we actually did that. And we were asking, um, what do you think about NG Mailer? Um, uh, is there any questions? Uh, we still do that in the first, the first call, but not as much now because autoresponders really helped us um, in terms of educating uh, our new signups on the features that we have on NG Mailer. So we don't have to consistently having to repeat ourselves over and over again. Like, can you imagine in a day, we are like repeating the same things over and over again. And uh, so it kind of like, affected our I mean it makes us slow down in other things that we could do so we thought okay what that we what how is it that we can automate this so that's when we actually applied it in autoresponders so whoever that signs up so if you guys sign up sign up you will then notice that you will get um, a day-to-day -day education on um, uh, engine mailers features right and it really really do help so uh, I'm just going to play this autoresponders here and how simple it is. So you can create as many days as you want. You can start with day two or day seven and go to day 10, up to you. Um, and you can create uh, templates and it's exactly the same as how you're creating a campaign template. It's all drag and drop. You, you can choose to target the categories that you have created. Or you can even send birthday um, birthday uh, autoresponders to people. I mean, people love, regardless, I mean, even I who just started in this, I mean, I've been in this e email uh, marketing thing and I know that some of the emails I get is all like automated. But when you receive a birthday offer or a wish from Sephora or anything that I like, I'm like, okay, I know this is automated, but I feel good that you actually remember me and she thought about me, you know? Um, I think at the end of the day, it's more of, people will think more of the emotions uh, in terms of this first, then only they start thinking about the technicalities. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, that's the, the thing about other responders. So you, when people are in need, they see something, they won't think like, oh, did you like automate? this you know they're not going to think about that at the moment it's like i got a situation okay you're here you send me an email okay i'm gonna i'm gonna contact you about it so so yeah 
And lastly would be surveys. Okay. So surveys obviously works when you have a reoccurring customer. You want to know what they think, right? I mean, our products are never 100% perfect. You will always have to consistently make it better. Um, you will always have to um, improve. So what are, these are definitely one of the best ways to actually know how to to uh, improve yourself, regardless whether it's your service, your product, um, your customer service, uh, these surveys are actually one of the most effective ways. And sending it through emails, it, it gives people time. Um, I'm, I'm not feeling obligated, I'm not feeling pressured to open my emails immediately, as compared to if you were to call someone and just ask for a survey. And I mean, how many people out there is receiving cold calls or in open arms nowadays? We are just so defensive, right? So as you can see here, it's, uh, it's also a simple thing. It's a drag and drop again. Um, you can preview and then once you publish it, um, we have, we have an um, auto-generated uh, link that you can just copy and paste. So you can even embed it in uh, your email. And we even have a QR code that you can get people to scan. Um, so if you, I mean, I, I noticed some, they actually go around and have a tablet. And uh, so basically this is like so easy to use. So this is, the, this is like a, a, an overview of our uh, survey tool. And we also generate um, reports for you. So basically you can get to know who the one that answers what. Um, if you want it to be anonymous, you can put it as anonymous. If you want it to be unique, so one person can can only answer it one time, you can also do that. Um, so this is how our um, surveys actually work. And that's basically the three top tools that you, you can actually use to engage and basically retain your customers using Engine Mailer. Um, lastly would be tracking and improve, right? So Obviously, you're doing all that work. Um, you will want to know like how the results is and which part that we can actually improve on. So that's where the reports come in and that's the importance of reports. Um, so this is an overview of how our, basically this is the information that we generate uh, for every campaigns that you have. So we basically we generate how many emails you delivered, um, how many has opened, uh, total clicks. We even show who are the highest subscribers that's open, who are the, the, the links that are being clicked. Um, are they opening on uh, desktop or is it mostly on mobile? Uh, which countries they're from? And if you want to get into detail, you can also, we also have um, the list of people who has opened unique clicks, clicks, uh, bounds, and who has unsubscribed. And we even show the reasons that the, uh, the bounds, the reasons why the, uh, the emails bounce. So this is basically an, an overview of um, our, our reports. And yeah, so I... I yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Would you like to take some questions? So that's about a few questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. yeah. Um, quite a few are similar questions. I just thought I'd read it up for you. Mm -hmm. um, one question is if I, if I upload email, some questions are answered by your colleague if I'm not wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just a few for you. If I upload emails which are already in my engine mailer subscribers list, will it create a duplicate or overwrite? Um, okay, so for emails, uh, we will not overwrite um, because it's already what. So, so this is how I'm just going to explain the A to Z and how um, it works. So, when you import a list, uh, the first thing that we will check is uh, whether it has duplicates within your list first. And the second thing, second thing that we will check is your bad format emails. So, this is the first thing that we will actually clean up from your list first. Then once we import in, we will then cross-check over all your existing database and to see if any of the emails actually exist already. If it exists, we will not override. But 
there is an option for you to check to override other data. So if you want to update maybe your first name or your last name, you are able to do that just by checking the box. But we do not override email addresses. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And um, um, if you guys have any questions, do let us know. Put it in the Q&A session. And um, another question is, can we use this for bulk call emailing purpose? Okay, that is a very um, hot question. Um, no, for all ESPs out there, it's we have a very strict rule um, that if you have very high hard bounces and very high unsubscribes, we will have to block you. Now, the reason why we do that is because it, firstly, it will affect our other customers in terms of delivery. Secondly, it actually affects your domain reputation. So domain reputation is a very important topic that I think a lot of people don't uh, really know about. Um, when you send out really a lot of emails and you have really bad reports, like I mentioned, high pop bounces and high um, unsubscribes, um, email clients like Gmail and Hotmail and Yahoo will then flag your domain and blacklist it, which will result with whatever emails that you sent will end up in spam. Okay. So even, yeah, so it's the same thing as, you know, when you build your reputation and then you do something bad, it will take years for you to get back your reputation, right? <laughs> this is the same, the, the, the same applicant to this. So it, it, we, we, we do not encourage people to do uh, bulk cold email, uh, blasts. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, for us, I mean, for me personally, I would prefer like, I'd much rather have 1,000 of people who are really opting to know about my product as compared to having to send out to 10,000 people who don't even know about my product and don't want to know about my product. And, and you ended up with affecting your engagements in terms of your reports. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's a fast way, but it's not the best way. Okay. Okay, that's also yeah. another question on how do you compare your platform, Engine Mailer, right? With mm -hmm. MailerLite or MailChimp? Okay, um, another hot question. Uh, <laughs> so, one of the things uh, that we, we have is um, probably our pricing point. Um, for a case like MailChimp, um, they do charge you after a certain amount of context that you have, which actually is a challenge for small SMEs, especially when they want to grow and um, it becomes too expensive. So our pr pricing model works at such that um, we do not charge on how many contact lists you import. We solely charge on how many emails you sent on a monthly basis. So um, that's actually one of the things um, that we have. Secondly, our subscribers tool, um, we actually auto suppress your contact list. Um, if I if I know uh, if I'm aware of Mailchimp's Mailchimp's actually man you need to upload manually the suppress list. So as long as you do not upload the suppress list of what emails that you need to need them to not send to, uh, they'll keep on charging you in terms of email credits and also um, yeah it does not help to clean your email list as, um, at all. So yeah that's one thing our subscribers uh, tool actually helps to to clean your list along the way it's all real time and um yeah so those are two things and the least of course um because we are targeting right now we are really focused on our malaysian market um mm -hmm. pals so mm -hmm. and we noticed that one of the challenge uh, when it comes to uh, subscribing to overseas uh, products is that when there's any issues um the support is uh, lack lacking or lagging and uh, that's why we felt that, okay, we are here, um, we are present, and um, we will help to the SMEs out there here, especially in Malaysia, to, to grow. Because it's basically the same thing. Um, but I, did, I think at the end of the day, we just have to ask ourselves, what are your goals? You know, um, are, you looking, are you looking at the price points? Um, are you looking at support? 
Um, what do you want to achieve from Yes, your- what do you want to achieve? Uh, what are you looking for in terms of email marketing? So if the cost is the issue, then you have to look for an ESP that works for you. If mm-hmm. it's a support is issue, then you have to look for an ESP that works for you. So okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, two more questions. Um, comparing to MailChimp, a limit to uh, 2,000 contacts. I check Indian mailer can send to 10K um, per month, limited 500 per day, unlimited subscribers for the free plan. What are the other differentiation for your email service? Um, okay. So I think uh, I just have to repeat that regardless whether you are a free or paid plan, you can actually upload unlimited subscribers. Um, also, another thing is that regardless whether you're a free or paid plan, you have all access to all our features. Um, there is no add-ons that like you have to pay extra to use our other responders. So you have to pay extra to see uh, our reports. Um, everything is uh, you can use regardless whether you're in a free play, uh, the free plan or paid plan. Uh, you basically can use everything, and because um, you we allow you to uh, upload un- unlimited subscribers, you have a flexibility in terms of upgrading and downgrading your plans. So mm-hmm. what do I mean by this is that maybe you're not really consistent in terms of sending newsletters uh, now because you're new, for example. So if you're sending maybe this month about twenty five thousand, which you end up in the paid plan then the next month you know that you're definitely not going to send or you're sending maybe less than 10,000 in a month. So um, you can then downgrade so you don't have to pay unnecessarily for the month after, you know. So there is a flexibility there. And uh, yeah, so our aim actually, when we came up with all this, we actually thought about um, the small SMEs. Um, I think uh, the bigger SMEs out there, uh, they already have... Uh, their own systems in place already. So for us, we were like, okay, we need to target those guys who really, who really want to grow their business, um, who, which cost is one of the sensitive points there, and how are we going to help them to do that? So one of the ways is, of course, uh, to allow them to grow their list. So it's okay if you're not sending emails yet. You can use NG Miller just to uh, manage your list, and once you're ready to send out, then you can start using uh, the other the campaign. So, of course, as far as long as you have an active uh, account with NG Miller and you're using it, then, um, yeah, it's free forever. Okay. Um, two, I think, two very short questions. Um, I noticed the pricing rate is in USD. Is there a Malaysian ringgit pricing since this is a local company? Uh, not for now, um, because even though we are a local company, we do plan to go um, worldwide, yeah. <laughs> uh, international. I mean, uh, we do have customers around the world today. Uh, so uh, USD is being used as a universal currency, but we are looking into that. Don't worry. But as for now, um, yeah, it's going to be in USD. Okay, last question. What is the inbox rate for Engine Mailer? Inbox rate, uh, can you elaborate more? Um, I'm not sure. The person who asked the question shall elaborate. Um, okay, maybe um, I ask Kelvin Lee. Kelvin Lee, if you would like to um, elaborate the question, you can uh, speak to Sutitra personally, um, I, if that would help. Um, anything else that you like to, uh, oh, I think your colleague answered the question. Yep, your colleague answered the question. So, oh, okay. Sujitra, is there anything else that you'd like to add on to wrap up the session? Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess you didn't have time. I wanted to share my best practices in um, email marketing, but uh, you guys can always just um, email me or message me. Okay. Um, yeah, so if yeah. you want any um, more info, yeah. So Jitra's uh, email, uh, I think I uh, will put it under the chat uh, section. Yeah. So if you if you have any questions, if you have any uh, details that you'd like to uh, know more about um, Gmailer or email marketing, do contact Jitra personally. Sorry, we need to cut off because of the timing restriction because our next speaker is ready. And um, that's also another question. Are you tracking open rates, clicks? So. Um, yes, we do. Um, I think uh, if you can see that, I think I'm just still beaming up my 
my report section. Um, so if you see here, we actually do track open, unique opens, clicks, unique clicks. So all the reports that you see here is what is going to be generated when you actually send your campaigns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I hope that answered a lot all the questions. So thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining us at SME Digital Fest. Very, very nice to have you on board and uh, stay safe. Yeah, and stay safe. So take care, you guys. Bye. Exabytes. Grow your business online.